Oh yeah, it's toasty. Okay, I'm starting to make the mold now. Just trying to decide what coins to cast today. Okay, I think I'll do an aluminum heat sink. And one of my three Mez coins. powdering and mold. This is just common flour. Get this little brush here. Make sure I got to powder on here. But just a fine trickle coming off when I hit it with this little piece here. You don't want to overdo it on the powder or else it'll make your coins come out and grainy or whatever you're casting. With the aluminum it's not as big of a deal as it, with, as it is with the heavier metals. Because aluminum won't be able to force into all those tiny flour grain sized areas. Of course, you don't want to underdo it either, because then stuff will stick and all your details won't come out. With aluminum, since it's a lot less dense than copper or silver especially, there's not as much pressure pushing down into all those little spaces with the aluminum, just because it doesn't weigh as much for the same volume. That can be a problem with casting smaller details. I'm not 100% sure if this heat sink will work out or okay or not, but I guess I'll find out. I know the coin will, because I've done one of those before, even in aluminum, just wasn't recorded before. I'm just going to sip some sand on there. Now just file off uh, the sand, quite literally, with an old file. Just gotta get this flat so the other half can go on.
Okay, now how to do the second half of the mold. Got to powder it again. The highest grade parting agent, store-bought flour. The swag techium powder has been applied. Time to apply more Martian sand. I think I've tried to cast an aluminum heat sink before. wonder how it'll turn out. What I'm worried about is those fins. They might just turn into weird bubbles or whatever you call it. Uh, they, basically the aluminum just might not pour all the way into the fins. Might just leave like a little short curved piece of a fin where the aluminum failed to pour in from the lower density. Okay, now I'm going to open this boy up. Looks like no sand stuck in any of the details of the coin, so that's always good. Now I'm just going to pack in some sand at the sprue here. Because if I just let the aluminum touch the cast iron directly, it's going to heat up a lot. And also the aluminum's gonna lose a lot of heat and not be able to pour as far. <laughs>
gonna take some tweezers and put some little vent spots in here. That should allow air to escape. I make the vents where they connect back to the main spring part. I make them 90 degrees so that, that way the metal won't flow in there to start with. It'll only flow after it's filled up everything. Okay, now there's some sand stuck in there, so I'm going to dust that off. And then I'm going to take this brush and force down all that, pack it down so that it's smooth. There's no sand that's going to get blown loose by the flowing metal and get knocked into the designs. Okay might be able to see on the video that the sand trails except for the little air vents are all smoothed down. I'm going to move this over here. I'm going to cut the same thing into this one. Except only to here. I'm not going to cut trails down there. This just gives me a wider pore spot, which is a lot help, a lot more helpful with aluminum. Because aluminum tends to just come out in a big blob as soon as you pour it out, because if it's a high surface tension and pretty low density and higher viscosity. Pretty much all liquid metals will have high surface tension, but with aluminum, that high viscosity and low density works against you as well. It's harder to get an even stream of aluminum when you're pouring, especially when you're pouring something like this that's relatively small. I don't know if it's in focus right now, but I'm packing down there. Might be able to see how I'm doing it. Using the smooth around part of the brush handle. smooth out that Martian sand. Of course with this also that big heat sink that's going to be casted, that's going to probably block any grains that would try to come through and get to the coin. With all those fins would probably trap all those free floating grains fairly easily, at least I think. Loosen this up, I'm going to tap this with this plate here. Or better yet, I can even use this so I don't scratch up the duct tape that's making that, old, that heat sink smooth on the back. Lightly tap it with that plate to get those sharp effects, and uh, looks like the heat sink's loosened up a bit. But it's not going to come out easy, that's for sure. If I do this, see it came out without much trouble. With that heat sink removed, now I'm going to proceed to remove the plastic coin out of the mold. I'm going to tap it lightly with the plate. This loosens it up.
Okay, I'll move the plastic one. Now that's nearly ready. Just going to pack down a little bit more sand along the rim there. Now you see why these aren't so quick to make. The mold takes a while. You have to make sure every detail is okay. Now I'm going to put the two halves together. carefully lower the two halves together. I'm going to re-flatten this here. I'm just going to put this on the tiles now. Lighting's a lot better in here because now i got an adapter that holds uh, five light bulbs. That's the mold completed. Oops. That's a lot of slag. still liquid. I'll give it a few more seconds or so.
Looks like the heat sink came out a little bit better than I expected. Some rounding on the fins near the top because of the lower density of aluminum. Take it over to the bucket. Use the bucket. Okay, well, there's still some sand stuck to it, but. I'll clean it up later and show it at the end, just like always. Okay, here's the finished uh, aluminum heat sink and coin. Here's a close-up of the coin. The details came out all nice. The surfaces are smooth. All the points and everything is sharp. Nice and shiny. Here's the heat sink. It was near the top of the pour. And here's the heat sink. It was near the top of the pour. You just flip it around here. You can see that the edges are kind of rounded at the side closest to the sprue back is smooth. Okay, now the reason why the heat sink is like that, when the copper one came out so sharp, is because the aluminum has a lot lower density. So there's not as much fluid pressure to push up the molten aluminum in those thinner areas. At the bottom where the coin was, there was still enough pressure to create all those details. But up near the top, there wasn't enough pressure to force the aluminum fully into those flaps. And that's one of the problems with casting with aluminum, is the lower density can be a problem. There are other metals that you could cast that have a similar melting point to aluminum, but are denser. Zinc actually has a lower melting point than aluminum and is denser. Or you can have zinc aluminum alloys, but those aren't really good for making heat sinks. So some coins you might want to cast in copper or brass, even if the metal has a higher melting point, because it looks nicer. And because it casts better, the details come out sharper throughout the whole cast, rather than just at the bottom. Okay, well that'll do it. I'm like holding a piece of a mold right now. I can't really talk right now. Well, okay, then just don't call a billion times. I gotta go now, okay? Okay, what is it? At four? I don't know if I'll be done with this by four.